Hello and welcome to round 10 here at the FIDE Women's Grand Prix in Gibraltar. You might have noticed we are early. That's because we have a very special guest, the Honorable Joseph Garcia, the Deputy Chief Minister of Gibraltar. Thank you so much for being here with us. Um, tell us, before we went live on air, you told me, you know, chess has been such a big priority for, for Gibraltar. So tell us a little bit about your involvement and your experience with chess throughout the years. Well, first of all, thank you. Welcome to Gibraltar once again. Thank and, you very uh, much. Thank you very much for, for having me. The, um, we set out when we came into government in 2011 in our election manifesto, actually, the platform of promoting chess in Gibraltar <laughs> and make, uh, making it a commitment if you are elected, they would actually uh, encourage the promotion of chess in different ways. Obviously, pe people like uh, Brian Callahan, who's sort of Mr. Chess in Gibraltar, approached us, and uh, we're very keen to support the different tournaments that have taken place. I myself have had the privilege of visiting every single chess event wow. that has taken pl pl place in Gibraltar, and I'm delighted to have been able to have done that. Of course, a, a lot of different things have been done here uh, with regards to chess. The, the festival has grown to be one of the strongest and I think the most popular. I think all the players, I think the main thing, they enjoy the competitive element, but they love coming here to Gibraltar. Then there's the Junior Festival, and now this year is something different altogether. I know you're about to go to the playing hall and make the ceremonial first move, uh, but how does it compare now to have this FIDE Grand Prix? Well, the Grand Prix is a very different uh, event. Normally, we would have hundreds of people mm -hmm. all over Gibraltar. All hotel rooms would be full. We need to bear in mind also that this has taken place in the context of a global pandemic, yeah, where, where, where it's the background is very different. But, but there is one important theme, I think, and that is Gibraltar has been very, very strong in encouraging women's chess. Mm. And we did that, we've done that with the chess mm. festival. We've also done it today by inviting the, the Grand Prix, having hosting rather the, the Grand Prix in here in Gibraltar. So it's a pleasure, an honor, and we're really happy that you've come. I think the pleasure is ours. I think I just speak on behalf of myself, but also all the players, all the, all the team. It's, it's uh, so great to be here in Gibraltar, especially in the uh, context that you mentioned. Let me ask you a question. You said you've been to every, uh, every single one of the events. Do you play chess yourself? Well, I, 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 I'd be lying if I said I play regularly, because I don't. But I started playing chess against a computer mm -hmm. many, many, many years ago when I was a teenager. And I found one of the advantages was whenever you made a mistake, you could press a button and go back. <laughs> and then you could do something else. But, yeah. and, and that's how you learned. So I started learning with a computer. I haven't played for a while now, but I certainly enjoyed it. And uh, another question, have you seen the, the Netflix hit series, The Queen's Gambit? I started it, I, I confess. I haven't mm -hmm. finished it, but I started. But I really, uh, I really understand what the, the movie is all about, and mm -hmm. I intend to, to watch it. But certainly, it shows you the impact that chess can have um, in, in a country, the impact it can have for a country as well, because it certainly helps to put Gibraltar mm -hmm. in the map internationally. In many countries and many places across the world, which one normally wouldn't have heard about Gibraltar, and chess has been a very useful way of promoting Gibraltar as well. So we promote chess in Gibraltar, and we promote Gibraltar through chess. Well, Chief, uh, Deputy Chief Minister, thank you so very much for all the support, the continued support uh, throughout the years. And maybe just one question now, the tournament is coming to an end, only two rounds to go. What is next uh, for you know the, the government of Gibraltar, but also in particular in the context of the chess festival? Well, we, we've been very happy to support chess throughout the years. I mean, th that support uh, is continuous and ongoing. As I said, we had put it in our electoral program. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know whether <laughs> there are any governments in the world think, no, I've never heard. <laughs> that are put promoting chess wow. and supporting chess yeah. in, our, uh, in our electoral program. I mean, our commitment to chess is as solid and as strong as the rock itself. I couldn't be more delighted to hear that. Thank you so much once again for everything you have done, you continue to do, and I'm certainly looking forward to where we're going to go uh, from here. I will let you go. I know you're about to make the ceremonial first move. We will be watching that on camera, but thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being here. And it's again, been an thank absolute you. Thank pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And we will stay on air. Vesselin will join me in a second and then we will follow uh, Sir Garcia into the playing hall and see what move he will make. Have you thought about which move you want to make? No, I'm thinking about it <laughs> as we sit. <laughs> <laughs> so we will find out. <laughs> we will find out in a minute. Thank you so very much for your time and I'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello and welcome back again, <laughs> Vaseline it is, round 10, it was great having the Deputy Chief Minister here with us, a bit of a surprise, we weren't uh, expecting him so early, but I mean it's so fantastic to see just how much the gov government here in Gibraltar supports the jazz. Yeah, it's really great that, uh, I mean when they started uh, nearly 20 years ago, uh, I didn't, uh, what I like about Gibraltar, they really s started s uh, small, small yeah. and it's, they've been they've been uh, growing little by little. And now, uh, if you think, you know, uh, uh, it's the most important event mm. of the uh, Iberian Peninsula. Yeah, I, I mean, mean it's I don't think in Spain yeah. for the moment or Portugal, they, I don't think they have uh, such an event. Yeah. Maybe they do have more important events like national championships, but not, but not the level they have here. And by the, here we have uh, Dr. Joseph Garcia, the, the Deputy Chief Minister, making his way to the board of Shanzaya Abdimalik, who yesterday uh, played an insane game. If you haven't seen it, go back and, and watch it. She is giving him a hint. I was asking him, do you know what move you want to make? But she she's not Looks taking like any C4 chances. Oh, no, it's E4. It's E4. <laughs> I think it's E4. Oh. <laughs> um, so Shanzaya, who yesterday with her marathon victory against Valentina Gunina, uh, crossed 2,500 for the first time in her life. She had already scored all GM norms, so she will be uh, a full grandmaster at the next FIDE Congress. And today, a, a very important game, actually, against uh, Katerina Lachno. For Shanzaya, she's, well, let's bring up the, the cross table. I think that will make things easier instead of me uh, trying to explain everything here. Actually, okay, we're going to look at the pairings. Uh, look at the pairings first. So we see Abdul Malik playing Katerina Lachno, and I believe draw not only she wins for sure while making a draw with the white, but because for still she has a less rating than Lachno. Yeah, I think actually let's try and bring up the cross table. I think it will be easier to if we look at the cross table first to understand. So yeah, 
So we have uh, Abdul Malik uh, two points lead and uh, shared second to fourth place. There are three girls, mm -hmm. Maria Muzichuk, Katerina Lachno, and uh, Gunei Amamadzada. So Abdul Malik plays uh, Lachno. And again, I said because uh, her rating is still below Lachno's rating, a draw would even give her an extra point for the rating she needs. Mm. Then we also have the uh, game between Antoinette playing white against uh, Elizabeth Betts. Yeah, I think so. As you mentioned, Shanzaya, a draw either today or tomorrow will be enough for her to win uh, this Gibraltar Women's Grand Prix. Unfortunately for Shanzaya, she is not in the race for the, the qualifying places. So for the, the candidates because she was a reserve player. So I think now that Shanzai has dominated the tournament like this, most of the attention will shift to who will qualify. Yes, um, and then we the have um, still, I think still Lachno, she, she, she has a fairly good chance to be one of the candidates, um, to take one of the uh, two spots. Uh, yeah, exactly, two spots yes. are up for grabs. And uh, so, well, I don't know, maybe because both are probably happy with the draw, it could be a quiet game. And I would be re yeah. re I would really appreciate a quiet <laughs> we game. We would also appreciate Honestly, <laughs> you know, I, I, woke up, uh, I woke up with a headache and I, I think that's because I've been uh, having a nightmare with uh, Valentina and the one, and the one actually sh the, who, who helped me. Then I met Valentina, she gave me a pill. <laughs> so I'm fine now. <laughs> like in the Queen's Gambit, a green pill or... <laughs> some kind of a pill, a Russian pill I never heard of. And it's really great. But... Is uh, it, ha has it worked? Uh, perfectly, <laughs> perfectly. Yeah, but I guess my, my nightmare consisted it in, uh, in uh, Valentina finding a defense and then, you know, the, the game keeps Continue. on, uh, continues for an, ac an extra hour. <laughs> So, unfortunately... Poor Vaseline, what have they done to you? Only a nightmare. <laughs> so. so let's uh, bring, yeah, very quickly the pairings back up. So Katerina Lachno, she's currently later on, we will just show you the standings for the Grand Prix. Uh, but Katerina Lachno currently in pole position out of the players here. Also Hampi Conero, who couldn't make it because of the COVID situation in India. She is still a great favorite to qualify despite not being here. Yeah, still good so chances. So only five players are still in the running. Maybe that we can tell you already. Humpy, who is not here. And from the players here, Katarina Lachno, uh, Nana Zagnitze, and the two Mosishuk sisters. Everyone else is out of the running. So those are going to be the ones that we pay particular attention to. And Veselin, shall we start with the game of Jean Zaya, our new GM against uh, Katarina Lachno? Okay. Um it could be um, some kind of long positional uh, ending. Mm -hmm. in or, of course, what I'm really worried, they could, of course, repeat moves like there's been, there have been now many, many A games. A lot of these, uh, yeah. But let me see what is happening. So it's been one of the big That's exactly scandals. what it looks like is yeah. going to happen. Uh, so uh, in the in this crypto, I don't know how to call it, <laughs> crypto, crypto cup cup pool, championship, uh, it is a well-known uh, draw. I think know? this will be over. We're yes. lucky that we came well, to this game immediately. In fact, because in fact <laughs> m me, myself, once I, I played, uh, if black wants to fight for draw, he has to play uh, the move d6. And then e6 is a very interesting game. Black is... Uh, well, it's maybe still around equal, uh, but it is f much more interesting than the... Than We're going to see a handshake here, Vaseline. And actually, one of the things, Shanzaya, will we, we will be able to officially congratulate her yeah. on I winning uh, this... Um, this Gibraltar event, she has scored, she's 8 out of 10, nobody can catch her, and here we are going to see a handshake, and that game, 5 minutes in, this, it, was, a, this is, was a quick one. <laughs> it is difficult to blame uh, the girls, because, I mean, if top, <laughs> top players of the world uh, do this, then... Sometime. And I will ask, actually, our team if we can get Shanzaya in the st uh, studio, because it would be great to hear from her well, um, I, I, not I, about today's game <laughs> we have to 
please, we have to ask her about her uh, chocolate bar. Yes, that is, uh, that is very good that you're reminding me. Very good that Because she, uh, I thought it was me who br brought her luck because since <laughs> I arrived, she, she was lucky against uh, Zagnitze, yeah. extremely lucky yesterday as well. And uh, I don't remember the third game she played, but uh, everything has been smooth since my arrival. <laughs> Yeah, so, so maybe the combination of Vaseline and Milka. The, the Milka chocolate. <laughs> I will make sure to, to ask her. Okay, one game down, five to go, but once I think completely understandable for Shanzaya, a draw seals the well, tournament victory. She played after so, the game yesterday. Exactly, and for yeah. Katarina Lachno, it's one step closer uh, to the, the qualification. I saw a question in the chat Can Shanzaya, uh, does Shanzaya have a chance? To play in the candidates, yes, she does, but she will have to qualify through another another route. Not um, through the uh, women's, uh, the, through the Grand Prix. Exactly. Uh, and well, uh, rating is still not enough, and so it only yeah, means what the did World I, Cup. There are three places. Well, not just the World Cup. There, are I think, three places in the World Cup and one in the Grand Swiss. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So she'll have the World Cup. Either she wins the Grand, yes. the Grand Swiss. No, no, yeah. no place by rating. There is, yeah, I <laughs> let me, <laughs> my notes, oh, it could be, I still can't could be remember them, they don't more. say no, so fact, much. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, maybe there's one place on rating. One place on rating, one place on the Grand Swiss, three spots in the World Cup, two spots in the Grand Prix series, and one spot for the runner-up of the last match, which was uh, Alexandra Goyachkina. Well, I mean, the perfect, I, I always believe the perfect cycle doesn't exist, but the problem I see only with, uh, with these three places in the World Cup is that uh, sometimes the, the, the impression is the semi-final is more important than the final. Mm, yeah, yeah, so it's a clear drawback, of course. Uh, by the way, Veselin, today we will, I think it was with Nigel, when Nigel was still here, we discussed uh, the national dish of Gibraltar. Do you have any idea what it is? I was here. I, it, was it, it was with you. It was with you. Of course, I, and yes. now I got confused. Calentita. So, I have good news. Today a friend of mine will bring for us Calentita and we can try. Here? He will bring it here, oh. yes. <laughs> so we will be able to, to so try it live on air. Then I don't mind if the game lasts seven hours. I don't care. We'll have but energy. Shout out to, uh, to Craig. I don't think he's watching us. I think he will be here in a, at around four o'clock. Um, and he will bring us some Calentita. Our producers look unimpressed. <laughs> they does seem not to be big fans of Calentita, but we will make our own. Our own opinion. We have to try it. I mean, <laughs> after so many times uh, coming to Gibraltar, it's uh, yes, of course. Uh, okay, shall we f try and find some chess somewhere? Else? Yeah. From what I see, okay, there are not so much happening now uh, as we see uh, here. Um, Mamadzada. Uh, oops, oh, yeah. sorry. Mamadzada against uh, Sadvakasova. It could be. It could be. Uh, uh, the Catalan, or it could be some kind of a Benoni. W for sure, we know it's not going to be a Queen's Indian. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so the, the the move G3 it allows some kind of Benoni, uh, and then the pawn is already on G3, uh, but it avoids the Queen's Indian. And of course, the uh, Catalan is uh, probably going to happen. Yeah. Uh, that's for the moment here. We also have, um, ah, that's interesting, Bull Maga against Anna. It's a sharp line of the French with uh, when, uh, when. By okay. the way, sorry, Vaseline, just good news for all our viewers. Shantaya is on her way to us, so she w we will be speaking then to it her. Means that I, uh, you don't need me, you don't need me. Today, for the yeah, then. today I'm giving you a lot of. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's wait, let's mic you off on air. I don't know, is it? Is it Shansaya who's here? Yes, she is. So we're going to take a qu very quick second just to get her set up and we'll be right back with our tournament winner and new GM.
Hello and welcome back. I'm delighted to be joined by our tournament winner, Shanzaya Abdumalik from Kazakhstan. Shanzaya, congratulations. Thank you. Tournament victory, the rating for the GM title. How do you feel right now? Well, th this tournament is a really great one. <laughs> yeah, I feel really happy and, you know, yeah, I mean, I, it took me three years to get to the GM title so of course yeah I'm really happy I mean I, I, I don't even know how to describe my feelings I can imagine <laughs> it's all very fresh today yeah. uh, a quick draw against Katerina Lachner I think after yesterday's marathon yeah <laughs> you actually it. it was I think it was the right decision to just to make a draw but also okay I didn't expect that she'll play this knight f6 mm -hmm. I said that she'll play a6 mm -hmm. and I prepared some lines so okay if knight f6 I said like fine I'll just play d4 and just of course the same like I played in Lausanne actually <laughs> against Goretzkin <laughs> I yeah, also didn't expect and so like okay fine draw is okay but especially today I yeah. think Today's a, a day probably for celebrations. I mean, is this uh, how? Where does this rank in terms of successes in your in your career? Maybe this is the the highest one. I think, yeah, because before it was a uh, World Junior Championship under mm -hmm. twenty. I won in two thousand seventeen. So this one is the huge one. Very yeah, special. The biggest one. Yeah. Let's talk about yesterday's <laughs> game against <laughs> Valentina Gunina. I mean, it was so crazy. The game lasted 133 moves, more than six hours, and it was such a, you know, you were worse, and yeah, then... I was suffering so much. And then there was this one moment you had a winning move, and then, okay, at some point after all this mess, it's just a draw. Tell us a bit h how about your emotions in the during the game. Well, okay, after the opening, I get really bad position. I just lost a pawn. But then, you know, after I lost a pawn, I felt like um, I know what to do. I mean, before that, it was um, kind of mm. harder because so many pieces and, you know, a lot of ideas. So after I lost a pawn, I don't know how, but yeah, uh, it became easier for me, actually. And after that, okay, I mean, she had a pawn up, but still wasn't clear how to win the game mm -hmm. and then yeah we have this crazy game I mean okay it just happens <laughs> you told me so we were expecting of course I think like many people that it would just end you know in in a draw in this ending with opposite color bishops and rooks we thought okay the rooks will come off and yeah. and that will be it um, and then you said to me you know you even offered a draw yeah I offered a draw after I played rook a4 so mm -hmm. I saw the line that I'll put just my rook on the a line and mm -hmm. it will be just fine but Okay, she wanted to play for a win. I mean, I mean, I, you know, during the game, I was even thinking how, like, is there any <laughs> chance to, to win? Yeah. But I was like, okay, maybe 
Valentina was, she's just a fighter, okay. Of course, yeah. <laughs> and it comes, of course, with its good parts. It was a painful loss for her, but I think uh, one can only, you know, be impressed with how much she's fighting in every yeah. game, how long she's sitting there. And maybe just tell us about this moment where suddenly, you know, you were, like, it looked like a draw, draw, and suddenly you got this chance to, to push your H pawn. And I could see, you know, we could see you on the camera, suddenly new focus, new, what was going through your mind at that time? Well, of course I was fine with the draw, but after that I saw that she's planning to count with her king to the queen side, and the only chance is to put her bishop on c5, mm. then I realized that maybe I have some chances to play h4 and push g5, but as you see the game, I mean, I was still playing king h7, king h6, so I was waiting that maybe yeah. she'll suddenly yeah. she would just <laughs> offer me a draw, but okay, then when she played king b4, um, I saw this line with h5, uh, h4 just takes king h5, and then that I have this rook c4 check, mm -hmm. and I'll just take on yeah. f4. So I said like, okay, let's see what will happen, and it just pushed, yeah, and then, okay, I get some chances. But even after that, it was a draw, yeah. but okay, I mean, we played six hours, and boss was really tired, I think. I can imagine. Yeah. How did you feel after the game was over last night, when it dawned on you, Okay, first the game and of course, you know, getting the GM title. I think I was in shock. <laughs> 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 I was so exhausted and so happy mm. in the moment, so I don't know. <laughs> I just, I think I felt <laughs> just all the emotions at the same time. It might take some time <laughs> yeah. for it to... Yeah. To understand what yeah. happened. <laughs> Uh, Shansai, the main question I have for you in this whole interview, we've been wondering for the whole tournament about your chocolate bar. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> because it's always next to your board, but we never see you eat it. It's always still there at the end, or most of the time it's still there. So what is it with this chocolate bar? Um, well, uh, if, you, if you see the games, like I came with this chocolate for the first round, and you know when, when you win, you have this, I think, thing with sportsmen. So it's like, a lucky like, chocolate like, yes, bar. Yes, like just lucky <laughs> chocolate. I mean, you don't eat it, just just bring it on your game. And I mean, maybe yesterday you saw that I bring some mentos. Yeah. Yeah, so I knew that I, I won't take a chocolate. <laughs> I would just take the mentos, yeah. <laughs> Actually, and, and it worked. I, I thought that, yeah, I will open it for the last round, like when it's over and I am done with it. We will, <laughs> keep, <laughs> we will keep a close yeah. eye on that. Uh, Shanzai, I will let you go and celebrate soon. For, you're here with your mother. How yeah. does it feel special to be sharing this moment with her? Yeah, of course. But also, I mean, I think she's so happy. So she's just like... She can't say anything, she's just happy inside, <laughs> and I just feel it. Yeah. <laughs> We're not talking really about it, you know? <laughs> That's so nice. One final question. Uh, sometimes, you know, the GM title, it's the highest title you can achieve in chess. And now the question, you have achieved it. What's next? What uh, are your, your future goals? Um, the next is World Women's Cup, uh, which is in July, I mm -hmm. think. So, yeah, after I came back home, I have a training session, so yeah preparing for the next tournament. We will be keeping our fingers crossed for you because I know that I'm not the only one who would love to see you in the candidates tournament. You have so many fans out there. Shansai, thank you so much for thank coming to join us. It's been so great watching you throughout the tournament. Congratulations and enjoy thank you. <laughs> the rest of the day. And we'll be back with Vaseline and the rest of round 10 in just a moment.
Hello and welcome back again. Vaseline, it's so great to hear from Shanzaya. Finally, the mystery is, was revealed. <laughs> the lucky chocolate bar. Yeah. Some people drink champagne when they win, some, some people <laughs> eat chocolates. Tomorrow, maybe we need one dedicated camera that will just be on her, on her bar for the whole round <laughs> to see when is the big moment, when will this <laughs> chocolate bar <laughs> been open. Uh, but we still have five games going. Uh, there is still the race for the um, still the race for the candidates. I think with Katerina Lachner's draw, uh, I think there's I think Maria is out of the running. We will confirm this uh, later on when it when it is officially confirmed. But I think only Katya uh, Humpy, who isn't here, um, Nana Zagnitsa and Anna Musischuk remain in the in the race and Arno has just confirmed it for us in the chat thank you so much Arno so yeah Maria Muzicuk out of the race so four players two spots tomorrow we will know for sure Vaseline where do you want to go well um, for example my impression is that uh, in the game okay Mamadzada uh, let's see finally it was uh, uh, the Katana mm -hmm. and this kind of position in general, bishop a4, um, well, knight bd7 is more popular, I would say, or b6, yeah? So, taking on, d5, on c4 makes sense. For example, I believe, if I'm not wrong, in my game uh, against Anand, I played uh, b5, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a move connected uh, with the Mm, exchange sacrifice, but uh, well, the move knight d5 uh, leads to a very typical position where uh, it looks like um, black has um, uh, well uh, destroyed a bit, spoiled the pawn structure, mm -hmm. white pawn structure, and that the king is a bit open. But in fact, I would say that. Uh, uh, it can well the two bishops, the two black bishops, are, because the position is closed, they are not really that active. Mm -hmm. So it is about white has a, a lot of space, and black's position is a bit passive. In it, this, this is the this is considered a bit worse for black. But of course, position black's position is solid. Mm -hmm. You know, I expect the move queen c7 to be played, attacking the um, pawn on f4, and then move the knight. But again, main problem uh, of black is the bishop, bishop on c8, c8 for the moment. Uh, but it's, it's a bit solid. It is a solid but a bit passive position. Maybe actually now that we have him in the chat, maybe Arno can remind us because he had told us what amount of points uh, Gunai needs for, uh, for her GM norm. She missed it yesterday by losing her game, but I think Six and a half out of ten, I think he was saying. I think today a win would get her the norm again. I'll wait for Arno to, to uh, confirm for us if, he, if he's listening. Um, but it could be that she's playing again today for the norm in, in case of a win. So we'll keep, we'll keep an eye on this. Um, shall we go to Nana, the next person in line for the, the qualifying spot? Okay. Uh, we have so far nothing big is happening. From what I see, it looked like, uh, well, normally when um, c4 and uh, knight f3 and b3 is played, it, it happens in order because uh, white tries to avoid, I don't know the uh, repertoire of uh, Kashlinskaya, but it could be that uh, Nana wanted to avoid the Grunfeld defense. Mm -hmm. Could be, I don't know, uh, uh, Kashlinskaya's repertoire. Uh, nothing big, okay, it's a slow game. Uh, B3, uh, when um, the pawn is still on D2, as we see, uh, it's m it's a different now because, uh, for example, again um, D5, I I think it's still theoretical and um, should be fine for white for black. Uh, shouldn't be a big problem. Okay, the, and uh, again, it's not the only way to play with the black pieces, but d5 uh, is, it, I don't think it's a bad move, mm. simply. looks very logical. Um, uh, but again, it's, it's a position where 
the pawn is still on d2 uh, and it gives it gives a bit more of a flexibility for 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 white because you can also place the bishop to to c4 mm. and attack the pawn also sometimes um, we'll see so this is all theoretical what i'm i was looking while you were talking to abdul malik it was the game uh, between uh, Bulmaga, Irina Bulmaga, and Anna Muzichuk because, uh, well, Oof. let's go back to the start. What has here. happened? It, I believe that simply um, Anna is taking a, um, a big risk today because she, she sees she, that Irina is not playing well here. Mm -hmm. So she, she, I feel, I believe she feels obliged to play for a win. Uh, in I think she a might just be in a must-win situation already for this qualifying spot. In the French, it's the first French we're seeing during this event. We haven't had a single a single one. Yes, and especially a, a, a move like bishop a5, it is, uh, it is considered a bit of a sideline. Uh, well, it, it is a really sharp line, I would say, and um, it is probably a good choice as a surprise. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if... Uh, um, it's, be, it's the first time that Anna plays it, but it's a surprise and probably it's a good choice to play for a win. Leads um, to very dollar alleged uh, yes. positions and so we're back to see. So before here, for example, the other, the other critical move is um, uh, knight b5 instead of uh, uh, taking on a5. And uh, here, if I'm not wrong, critical is to leave all the pawns uh, F when when black develops and then tries to castle mm -hmm. long side and same. attack mm -hmm. white king which is in the center so but uh, king f8 uh, well i don't know it is probably the preparation anna has maybe she knows more but uh, somehow the feeling is that um, black will have to defend uh, against a fierce attack and mm -hmm. white has uh, natural moves like a4 opening it's a good move it's simply uh, when you 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 have a move like king f8 mm -hmm. it it cries for the move a4 and then the bishop yeah. goes to a perfect place let's so show that so the bishop is looking to come yeah. out to, to a3 Yes. Where it will be looking down at at the king on on f. So with eight. simply developing moves, I believe Y would get a strong attack. Mm. Uh, but of course, uh, that's why th w this is why it is risky. I uh, well, Black will probably take the pawn on a5 at some point point, and it is a risky choice. But if with Black, of course, it is very difficult yeah. to find. A, a good option to play for a win and without risk. <laughs> yeah, are you a bit surprised that Anna, like, yes, she probably needs a win, but are you surprised that she chose an opening where it's very double edged? I mean, it's sort of all or nothing rather than an approach where, okay, I'll just play a game and see if I can create some chances later on. What's your, your take? No, I, I think it's a it's it's a choice. I mean, yeah. I don't. We'll see, of course, if it was a good. Uh, maybe it's too too risky, in my opinion. But uh, it's also true that uh, Anna is playing, and Irina has been losing the mm. last four games in mm. a row, five. I don't five, know. Five, I think. So yeah. if uh, it's the typical situation when it's now or never, mm. you know, she has yeah. to. Uh, it's it's a calculated risk, I would say. Yeah. Uh, so I honestly, I don't know. Uh, the style of uh, Irina, if she's a positional player, but uh, for example, people that are not so good in attacking uh, and they are better positional players than uh, tactical, it, then they don't feel psychologically well. Then they have to mm -hmm. sacrifice or and uh, play with uh, without the material. Yeah, so a very interesting. Uh, this is going to be a very exciting game, actually. And we Anna had played knight c6, and yes. we had one more move. Check a couple more moves, actually. Yeah, yeah. We, we've had to check, and knight of three. So what we see now is that white is has m uh, simple developing moves. I believe that in the future the bishop will go to d3 and then castle, and then again white. Black's problem is, of course, that. She lacks coordination, Mozuchuk's, and uh, and especially very weak dark squares. Mm. You know, 
uh, and it will it looks like it will be like this forever uh, for the whole game <laughs> I, uh, I don't the, that's the problem when you give up your dark squared bishop course, you yeah, cannot of course. compete so objectively I would love to play with the white, white. pieces yeah. here but uh, probably uh, f for example now uh, it is not possible to attack the pawn on e5 uh, because then bishop would go immediately to d6 and that's such a great place for the bishop you were uh, you are saying, uh, sorry, to, uh, that you know you don't know Irina's style. Actually, Born Stubborn in the Twitch chat is reminding us and everyone out there. If you haven't seen the player, vin uh, the player interviews, there are some great videos on the FIDE YouTube channel. And in that video, they were doing interviews here. Irina called herself a dynamic player. Ooh. So this should suit her. So now is, is her chance to show yep. uh, her, her dy <laughs> dynamic skills. But uh, again, it looks to me that it's much easier again uh, f to play this kind of position with white mm. because white would always uh, have some activity, some uh, compensation. Mm. When if black makes a, a mistake, that could be really d the end of the game. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, this is going to be a very double-edged uh, battle. Where is black going to is create counterplays? Black going to play h5 and come on the king side, or what is black going to do? Well, I, the problem with, with playing the pawn and attacking the queen is it's not exactly clear if... Uh, well, uh, yeah, it could be the, the idea to play like this, and then if, let's say, Queen moves to a four. Uh, we play king a, king g eight, and then I don't know this kind of structure. Mm. Uh, if imagine if white takes, it still looks very ugly for mm. black because uh, I don't see a way now to you know to to develop mm. uh, the rook. Because the problem is, of course, that after king h seven, oh, there's always exactly. knight g five so check, and the king has to go. Long, well, long actually, this would even be checkmate, so exactly. it's not an option yeah. at all. But even if the queen wasn't there, that would be the problem. It is a long-term uh, initiative uh, with many weaknesses uh, f forever somehow, and also the the file uh, the f eight square is uh, controlled by the bishop, extremely strong bishop. So. Uh, well, pushing your pawns on the uh, on the side of the king uh, is not always a good idea. Honestly, I don't know. Well, of course, at some point she will have to she will have to remove her king. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's clear. It, the knight can't stand pinned uh, forever. Mm. But it is really a, a mystery for me uh, what what is her plan. Veselin, shall we go and see? So Shanzaya, after her marathon game against Valentina, her game finished in five minutes today. But I think with Valentina, we will get another, another proper game. Shall we see her, her uh, game against Maria Muzishuk? Yeah. Uh, so what we've seen here is a slav uh, a line. Uh, one of the it is quite an interesting line here uh, after Bishop f5. Okay, for many years uh, the move e6 was uh, considered main, mm -hmm. and then white goes here, and then bishop b4 was one move, and the other move was uh, c5, and there are other. Uh, also, there are there are, for example, uh, moves like not knight b6 as uh, Valentina played, but um, queen c7. You know, followed by e5. I think even uh, old games, hundred years ago, they they used to play like this: queen c7 and try to play e5. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a lot of old in old games were played. By the way, we're just on the wrong camera, so we're looking at uh, Maria Musichuk and Gunina. So let's go and see see over to to Valentina. Mm. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so uh, after knight b7, knight b6 here, and now black plays a5. In fact, this is, you know, this is how I played with black pieces in my last slow game. It was here l against, uh, oh, uh, what was his I name? I should know it as well because I was sitting here commentating. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, uh, honestly, I don't remember. I will, I this will. Ru Romanian grandmaster. 
uh, young Romanian grass ah, grandmaster. Ah, yeah. Yes, and fin it's, uh, this is how I played the last round, and we made a draw, but he didn't play um, um, uh, f3, I think. And then here, well, here there are two moves. Bishop d7 is pretty interesting. Worst is taking with queen. That mm -hmm. would be a mistake, because uh, if, take, if black takes with queen, then e4 and bishop e3, and, some, and somehow the, the knight would be in trouble. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there are two interesting moves, bishop d7, uh, e4, e6 here, here, so far it's OK. And I believe, so for the moment, everything is fine. But after the move knight a2, I don't understand why uh, bishop d6 was not played. It looks to me very logical. So bishop d6. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong because it's very obvious that after bishop d6, then queen attacks the knight. And that would be uh, a, a bit problem awkward, then, yeah. yes, for, for black. So maybe after knight a2, uh, c5 was played. So now we have a very interesting structure. Uh, which looks much, much better for white, because mm. if white goes b3 in, in order to protect, f not only white has two bishops, but also the, the knight is completely restricted, and it's a not good place for the knight on b6. It can run uh, immediately under attack mm. after b5. So And this b5. is also a position where the bishop here yes. is quite so nice. So honestly, uh, I prefer white mm. here, because uh, the only chance black has if she if she could place a rook on uh, b on c3, but yeah, even so that even Let's even that I don't think it compensates the worst pawn structure and the lack of two bishops mm. here. The, the dark square bishop is really important in this kind of situations, mm. and and al and also it's a very good question: what would is she planning to to do after? And again. These pawns are weak, mm -hmm. uh, especially the they in the future, pawns. they could become weak. And it's a mystery what she's planning to, to do after the move uh, d5. Uh, I only see uh, a mo only movies uh, knight a8, but it looks really ugly. Yeah, so one of the things that's uh, weird is if we look at the clock times in the game, uh, and OK, Maria has gone for She's actually played d5, d5 immediately. immediately yeah. yeah, also also looks good. But Valentina has been playing all her moves instantly, so either she's bluffing or she must have an idea in mind. Mm. Time will tell. Yes, uh, but this move, um, for example, a move like knight c8 is quite passive. And then if knight takes uh, a4, that could be a better solution because taking on a4 and taking and taking gives two pawns uh, to for the two bishops, mm. rook and two pawns for, for two bishops. And I, I would say that would, that's more or less level. Mm. But it means that here, uh, it could be that Maria, she wants to first play d6, d6 and then do the same. But even that, I don't know it. What did Valentina play? Because she played, in s she played knight c8. She played knight c8. Yeah. Well, uh, it's a bit passive, in my opinion. Uh, probably a move like um, knight a4 deserved attention here. In I guess she's following some kind of preparation. She's been playing every move instantly. It could be, but Honestly, I, I don't think it's a good preparation. <laughs> if this is, a <laughs> if this is uh, the, the idea of the whole preparation to go knight c8, uh, just. Well, we've had even more moves. So after here, sh Maria played. C1. No, she played d6. Oh, also, yeah. And queen f6. It is a nice uh, trick. Yeah. If black takes, then. Uh, bishop c5. And if she takes with wins. the queen? And if she takes with the queen, she loses uh, a, a piece immediately after the exchange and rook d1. Because mm. now there's no way to defend the knight, and uh, the bishop is behind it, and uh, she would yeah. lose also the. Yeah, okay, but 